My friends, I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this Tuesday morning. And I'm so thankful for how God has watched over us in the last few days with the storms and praising him for his goodness and grace, praying for those who were affected by the storms and for so many others. But if uh, today, if you remember, we are walking through some, some things that are going on in our world today and how they relate to Bible prophecy. And what I want to do is to give you kind of an overview of uh, what uh, the Bible says is going to be happening. Then we'll come back the rest of this week and we'll talk about some specifics. You know, one of the things that really concerns me is the new alliances or the strengthening alliances between Russia, China, Iran, Saudi Arabia, uh, other countries that are, are coming together, which uh, we'll talk about in the days ahead, and what the Bible says about uh, how the things are going to play out. Now, again, this is my belief. This is my interpretation of Scripture. And if you have questions, I'd be glad to, to field those. Just text me or call me, uh, send me an email, and I will do that. But share these videos if, if you think they're um, effective. But but as we get started today, let me just give you a, kind of an, an idea of, of where I'm coming from. Because a lot of pastors, a lot of Bible scholars today have said that we shouldn't really be worried about these things. We shouldn't talk about them. Um, and, and I agree that we can't let them overwhelm us. We can't let them claim all of our attention but I do think we need to be aware that we, as we approach the last day, some things are going to happen. And in knowing that, we'll be able to help others around us, especially unbelievers, to, um, to see the hand of God in all of this. And so, so doing, introduce them to the fact that, hey, God knew this was going to happen uh, when all of this was written. Um, and, and help them to come to a faith in, in Jesus Christ. But they say, many Bible scholars say it's too irrelevant for modern day audiences with all of their problems. But if you'll remember in Luke chapter 12, verse 56, Jesus rebuked uh, people for not knowing about the future. He, he said that you, you need to, to be aware of the signs of the times. Um, uh, one of my favorite authors, Dr. David Jeremiah, uh, says that in 17 Old Testament books, there are 1,845 references to these last days. Do you get that? 17 out of 39 Old Testament books, 1,845 references to the last days. In fact, for every one time that the coming of Messiah, the coming of Jesus is mentioned in the Old Testament, there are eight mentions of the second coming. Wow. Think about that. Uh, do you think maybe God thought that the second coming was important? Uh, in the 216 chapters of the New Testament, there are 318 references to the last days. It's mentioned in 23 out of 27 New Testament books. And uh, many scholars, many Bible teachers will say that that's uh, an irrelevant topic, even though it is mentioned one out of every 37 verses in the Bible. Wow. Can you believe that? It is important. God thought it was important. Jesus thought it was important. Paul thought it was important. John thought it was important. And I think we ought to think that it's important as well. Uh, Dr. Jeremiah makes this statement. He says, one second after the, the rapture takes place, the subject won't be irrelevant at all. The problem is most people won't know and they won't care. Well, let me just tell you, give you a brief preview of the future. Now, these first few things can can all happen simultaneously or in a different order. But I honestly believe that the next uh, big event on God's prophetic timetable is the rapture of the church. Now, what exactly does that word rapture mean? It's not a, a Bible word. It's not a Greek word. In fact, it comes from the, a Latin word that uh, means to be caught up or to be caught away. The idea is there in, in several passages. And in fact, if you'll go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5, you'll see that. Uh, if you go to the book of Revelation, you won't see it, but all of a sudden, the first three chapters are taken up with the church, and then from that point forward, the church is not mentioned again. And I think the reason for that is that God has made a promise to us that uh, the church believers will be taken out of this world to avoid the great and terrible day of the Lord, will miss the tribulation period. Uh, let me, let me just show you real quickly. I hadn't planned to do this, but I'll, I'll show you this real quickly. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, Paul writes, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we do believe that. 
Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, those who are died, who have died. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That's the rapture of the church. That's what we have to look forward to. And uh, I'm going to close this out. We'll pick up here tomorrow. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus.